Hey guys, welcome back to the Passing Money Plan. Today's topic is going to be one that I actually don't know. So I'm going to be listening more to you. Um, but it's uh, when you lose money in the stock market, where does that money go? So Kirby. I've, I mean, I have heard that it kind of, because I, I, that's why I say I, ha I really don't know, because I've heard like, if you give that company money, then they go bankrupt. It's like it just disappears, but I, I really don't know where exactly it goes. So, where do you, where do you think? Just taking an educated guess, where do you think it goes? To the government. All right, so that's a good guess. <laughs> well, no, no. All right, so understand it's uh the stock market is just it's all about buying and selling, right? And then for the people that don't know. It's always somebody on the opposite side of a trade. So when you buy a stock, you want the stock to appreciate. You're buying it to for it to appreciate. But there's something called a short seller. A short seller is somebody who sells the stock at a price and wants it to go down. So what happens to the money when it goes down? The short seller makes money on it. So when you so if you buy a stock at hundred dollars and sell it at $90, it was a short seller out there or a market maker out there that was selling you that stock at $100 and shorten it to buy it back at 90 when you sell it. So it's always somebody on the opposite end. The money just don't evaporate. It just goes to somebody that's on the opposite side of the trade. So if you watch the movie, The Big Short, hmm. and it was, I'm just using this guy as one person, but it was a plethora of people that was out there, but I'm using him because he was one of the bigger names in there when he was shorting the housing market. So all that value that went down, it was somebody on the other end of it that was betting that the value was going to go down. I mean, we can talk about, you know, the terrible times of 9-11 when people was invested in the airline stocks, but then people betted against it. But to understand that there's this thing called a market maker, no matter if you're on Charles Schwab, Robinhood, E-Trade, all these different platforms, it's called a market maker. So these platforms are intermediaries between the buyer and the seller. So the reason why the stock market is so efficient is because at any time that you buy, I mean, you buy or you sell something short, the market maker makes the trade and then sells it or buys it for somebody else. So first they make the trade with you. So the market can be efficient. So you can buy and sell when you want to at any given price. But then on the flip side, so they have the position for the intermediate term and then they're giving it off to somebody else on the other side. So when you buy a stock, somebody's selling, no matter if it's the intermediary or if it's another person selling. And then so it's always a give take effect. So it's the same way when the stock market goes running up, the people that short the market is losing money as the stock market goes up. That's why, you know, in the meme stock run, the hedge funds like when GameStop and all those AMC and stuff like that, when they took off running up, it was the short sellers that was losing the money because they was betting short that the stock market, the stock was going to crash, but it went up and the short seller was losing the money. So the money's going somewhere. It's not just evaporating in thin air. It's going somewhere. It's just not to the person you see. I mean, it's not a person you know see just walking around with bags of cash like, oh, I got Alex money and just running around like that. Yeah, no, that makes way more sense because I forgot because I had looked up that question, this question before and mm -hmm. I couldn't get a straight answer and someone was like, yeah, it just disappears. It goes into that. I was like, just like, go to the ether, and I, right? Yeah, and I really didn't know, and uh, but that that makes way more sense because short sellers have to buy back the stock that they borrowed, so that makes way more sense. Um, wow. Okay. So I mean, so then when it like goes bankrupt and then company, your tr your shares get transferred to over the counter stock or something like that, or. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you're when you're and I mean it's not apples to apples like yeah it's not apples to apples. So when a when a company goes bankrupt, it's just like a house a house being foreclosed on. Everybody's going to take a loss on that. Okay. I mean the short sellers, the people that got short positions, they're going to make money. 
a company go bankrupt, a co company go bankrupt, it's just like a house being foreclosed on. The banks is the one that's taking a loss. I mean, you're taking a loss because you're losing the house, but the bank is going to try to recoup the house because they're going to take that short-term loss. And then, but they still have the asset. Like the values go up and down, but they still have the asset because right. it's just an imaginary number until it's actually bought or sold. Right. For that right. And then it is it just goes from there. But if if you buy a house for two hundred thousand dollars and then it gets foreclosed on, the bank's writing it off to somebody, and somebody's taking a hit. Either the IRS taking a hit because of the write off. Somebody's taking a hit on the loss also. So the money is getting transferred. Just a wish wash system all over the all over. So somebody's taking a hit along with you, and somebody's gonna make money because they were shorting that same position or somebody's going to make money because they're going to buy it at the lower price and then have that equitable value or that, uh, yeah, the equitable value of the property when they buy it because it's just there because you got foreclosed on. So the money is just getting transferred. It's not just a total loss and the money is never seen again. Okay. So you hear the, the last one is you, so you hear people saying, oh, somebody got wiped out. It's always somebody that comes out. It's always somebody like, oh, they was on the other side of that. Yeah. And the market makers are always on the other side, especially in the stock market. The market makers are on the other side. Even if nobody wants it, the market makers have to buy it because that's why they're in this, in that position of a market maker of the intermediary. So the market maker, if, if nobody's on the other end, so if you got, again, a stock that's at 100, and then when they, as soon as you buy it, they're selling it. So they're automatically short. They're automatically short. So when it goes down, they're automatically short, even though they don't have a short seller to give it to you. Then there you go. That's the same way if you buy if you buy call options. The market maker has to buy the shares in case you exercise that call option to be like, hey, I want the shares. So they can have the shares to get to you. But they buy the shares, but the shares go down, and then they sold your option, then you lose the money there. But that's the position of the market maker to be able to make the market efficient. Somebody always has to buy or sell what you're buying and then buying what you're selling. So the money is still there. It's just who has the money. Okay, that makes sense. With all that being said, guys, if you have any questions on this, leave us a comment down below. Uh, like the video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one.